smart decision to just hold us until the tide turns. When the tide turns, the sailing breeze will diminish. Um, I'd say we get one really, really good race this afternoon. Fingers crossed we can uh, pull a rabbit out of a hat. Five, four, three, two, one. AP is removed. Yeah, unfortunately we have a two, three, four, uh, and then a BFG, um, which not so good. Um, yeah, we, we, we need to, to sail well today and we can be in the mix. 10 seconds to the start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, it's pretty close. I mean, there's a drop coming into to the point, so we're uh, currently tied with Laurie Smith and his team for the lead. So we've really got to keep our eyes closely on those guys and see what they do and try and get ahead of them. Uh, not really enjoying it and looking a lot through uh, the tide book every day and, and learning lots. 65, 70 percent of the fleet felt that the left-hand side of the course would be favoured puts an onus on starting at the pin and getting to the left. A couple of people executed that very, very well and they were race winning starts. But the setup is all about having the boat balanced. Um, as the great Vince Brun taught us when we were kids, when the puff hits the boat, if the boat doesn't accelerate, you need to change something. Um, apply simple principles. Uh, you know, it's nice to sail a boat with an overlapping jib. Uh, all the modern boats have non-overlappers, so uh, the tacking in terms of a technical discipline um, is rewarded. Uh, the boats are a little underpowered, uh, they go through then their sweet spot, probably 12 to 14 knots and then suddenly they're overpowered, so um, the ability to change the rig uh, and your sail set up to, to maintain enough power and then be um, depowering at the right rate is critical. Um, and then I would say the thing for the helmsman is minimal movement on the helm, you know, it's, it's a, a rudder on the back of a long keel. Um, set the boat up, try and use the helm as little as possible um, and be as sympathetic with your steering as you can be. I think the tide when it's going one way or the other is relatively easy. I think the biggest uh, time that you need to make bold decisions is when it's transitional. On uh, Alfie um, and we used sails straight off, straight off the shelf, we used our uh, A14 mainsail. Uh, which is a little flatter than the A7 that we also offer. Um, and that proved pretty good in this, um, you know, it's been predominantly a windy regatta. And most of the top teams this year uh, have been using that sail to, to great success all year. And then the V6M and V6H, medium and heavy Genoas, um, we both got some use this week. Um, nice big crossover between the two sails. Um, you know, they, they've been really great for us. And then uh, we use our R5 Spinnaker, which again most of the top teams here are using. Um, Laurie commented, you know, on one of the training days that you know Spinnaker looked great straight out of the bag. So I've uh, been pretty happy with that sail for a couple of years now. So yeah, we just had one race today. Uh, very strong winds this morning, and uh, east going tide made it um, uh, pr pretty unsailable first thing in the morning. But when the tide switched, that calmed the seas. Uh, down a little bit and uh, breeze moderated the touch. Uh, so we got one race in this afternoon, um, which, was, which was a nice race. Um, the situation meant that it was, the title was between ourselves and um, Peter Gilmore. So uh, unsurprisingly, we started pretty close to each other, but we uh, managed to get the better of the start. Uh, but Gilly um, and his team um, on Y Red, they came into us uh, on both the runs. In the end, it was really close, and I think there was maybe only two to three boat lengths in it at the finish line after a two-hour race. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty exciting, tough race, uh, but glad to come out on top.